On my end, Sandra, if it makes you feel any better, it says meeting is now streaming live on YouTube. Yeah, I think it's actually streaming on a on a different one. So what I'm going to do now than what I just gave you. Chat, I'm going to put have everybody move to that link. Let me go to. Okay. All right, I see everybody. And then I can shoot it out in a, an email while we get things started too, just in case people are joining late. Um, Deanna, for us, if you need, like we have a live on YouTube where we can do a drop down and go to view stream on YouTube. I'm just going to go there. Okay. From Zoom. Yep. Oh, I didn't even there, see that. Where is that? Oh, no, it's on Zoom. Oh, I see that. Yeah. Now streaming on YouTube. Copy streaming link. I have the... Let's see, view stream on YouTube, copy stream link. Do you want me to paste it in here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Right. Um, oh, good. Beautiful. Beautiful. People are there. Can you all hear us? All right. Um, we need to talk just to make sure that somebody can hear us. All right. Thank you, Tiana and Christopher. Awesome. Oh, good to see everybody. All right. Sandra, I, I will. I. I will take care of um, emailing everybody right now um, okay, good. with the new link. Um, once I once I intro myself, I, I can do that. Actually, I'll just email them right now. I'm still, I'm gonna keep checking the other side. Okay. All right, people are, people are moving. Good, good, good. All right. Sorry, everyone, we had a, a little bit of a technical difficulty. No matter how many times you test it, sometimes it can, it can all, it can always go wrong. Uh, well, why don't I get us started, Sandra? If, if you are ready to start, and then I can, um, and then I can email out uh, a, the class again with the new link, just in case we have people joining us late. Um, and hopefully they will still see it. Um, let me get to the YouTube link so I can make sure that I see the chat as well. Awesome. All right, well, hi everyone. My name is Deanna Parker. You've received the, the majority of your emails from me. Um, I work for the Institute for Veterans and Military Families and I would just like to officially say welcome to our very first inaugural class of EBV Spark. Um, and we are very much looking forward to this first cohort, excuse me, cohort. And with that, I just want to um, just state the importance of, of this. Um, uh, IVMF Arsenal team, which is our um, entrepreneurship portfolio, um, we have many, many programs that we can offer um, to a veteran transitioning, tra a veteran or military spouse transitioning anywhere from um, right out of the military, um, later on in life, um, whatever the case may be, and at any stage of your business, whether you're in an ideation phase, whether you're in a startup phase, or whether you're looking to grow your business. Um, and with that being said, the one thing that we never had up until this point was a completely virtual program. And uh, this is actually the pandemic um, obviously spurred on um, the need. We knew there was a need and this really heightened the need. And uh, so we've been working very hard the past couple of months to put this new program together. Um, and I just wanted to say again, welcome to all of you. I'm very excited to start this. And with that being said, you are very important, as I said, because you're the first cohort. Um, I sent you a survey um, in an email this week. And if you have not had a chance to take that survey, I'd greatly appreciate it if you took a, a couple of minutes to do so. 
And, and I said you're very important, and, and that's one of the reasons why. You're going to be very pivotal, pivotal in uh, surveying this course. And in order to get a proper survey, we'd love to for you to fill out that, that pre-program. So what are your expectations? What are your needs? Um, and then at the final, uh, the finality on the last week, we'll also provide um, a survey so that you can let us know how it went. Did it help you? Did it meet your needs? Um, was there more we could do? Was there less we could do? Um, and we really, really take that feedback seriously. So I just wanted to say that right off the bat. Um, but thank you for joining us. Um, for those of you who joined late, I'm Deanna Parker, and I work at the Institute for Veterans and Military Families in the Arsenal team, um, which is all, all things entrepreneurship. Um, and I just am very excited that we get to start today. So with that being said, I would like to introduce you to um, our enrollment team or part of our enrollment team, uh, a small part, um, but they do very big things. Um, and we have joining us today, <clears throat> two members of the enrollment team. Um, and they're here to number one, um, welcome you and introduce themselves and then talk to you a little bit more about your EBV application. So that application you filled out maybe a couple of months ago, maybe a year ago, maybe a couple of years ago, and you've been waiting for the right time to take this program. And because of the pandemic, um, we have not been able to host those. And so some of those have been postponed. Um, and so I'm gonna let them talk a little bit about what to expect for 2021 uh, when it comes to your applications and what you can do in the meantime. Um, and, then, uh, and then we'll start with the rest of our orientation to this course. So I will pass it over to Mai and Linda. Do, Mai, can you hear me? There's probably a little bit of a delay. Um, so Linda, can you hear me? I can hear you. Um, awesome. So it's so nice to meet everybody. I never get to actually um, very infrequently get to meet anybody um, in person. This is as close to in person as we get. Um, and um, I have the honor and pleasure of reviewing uh, the applications that come in for EBV. Um, so I, I know Mai will want to kind of walk through the process. I'm not sure she can hear us or not. So I'm going to just give her one second to see if she can hear us. If not, I will fill you in. So, um, so basically, um, as you know, with everything that's been going on, um, we, we are still gung-ho accepting um, applications like crazy for the 2021 programs. Um, this is such a great opportunity. Yeah, can you hear me? Oh, there's my, so, yep. Okay. So my, I was just starting to talk about the application process. I'll, I'll let you take over. Hi everyone. It is so lovely to be connected with all of you. And see that there is such enthusiasm in this inaugural online starter program for EBV. So thank you so much for being patient with all of our worldly delays. Delay no more. We are here for you. Know that we will remain here for you after you begin your journey with Sandra, who is our program graduate. She has participated in many of our entrepreneurship programs. and She is going to now lead you through this inaugural program. What happens to your EBV application that you submitted? We're going to keep it. And just like you heard all the 2020 programs and we helped you plan the primary university for you where your application will be reviewed, we are going to send you information for 2021. So it'll be a rewind and replay with your enrollment services team know we will stay connected 
throughout this year and send you information, prepare you over the holiday and greet you in the new year. Thank you so much, Mai, I appreciate it. Um, if you have any further questions about your EBV application, um, or if you um, have any other questions concerning you know, what to expect, um, uh, we usually announce new dates um, for the 2021 uh, program year in the fall, um, usually late fall, um, but that will all depend on what happens. Um, with um, government restrictions um, from, from state to state um, and how that looks for 2021, but we'll make sure um, that we are communicating with you at each step. But we are always here to reach out. Um, so feel free to reach out at ivmfentrepreneurship at syr.edu. Um, that is the best place to reach out right now as part of this program uh, because I'm here um, and I can address any answers or get you in contact um, with the person that you need in order to get that answer to you. So with that being said, uh, without further ado, I would love to introduce our instructor who has made this all possible. Um, although, you know, we've done work at IVMF, um, it takes um, a, a person that can, number one, handle digitally the things that we need done and two, know the audience well, um, and three, have the type of education uh, to be able to properly teach and properly instruct and guide um, so many of you that are here. And, and who better to do that than Sandra Gonzalez? Um, she is one of you, or soon you, you will have something other than business ownership in common. And that way is you'll be both program graduates. Sandra has been through a few of our programs. Um, and so she has been quote unquote in the muck where you are <laughs> um, and, uh, and has, has been very, very successful, um, but not, not to withstand hard work. So uh, with that being said, we are very uh, uh, glad to have Sandra with us. Um, she is an instructor for us in many of our programs um, uh, for our online portions of, our, of certain programs that we have. Um, and who better that I thought to have teach our very first completely virtual program, and that would be Sandra. So I'll throw it over to you. I will shut up and I will be standing by for questions um, along the way. Thank you so much. And thank you, Maya and Linda, for joining us. Um, feel free to stay on if you'd like, um, but there's no need. Um, if we do have some questions that I cannot answer, I'll make sure to pass those on uh, to you afterwards. So thank you all so much. All right. Thank you, Deanna. Good to see you, Mai and Linda. I never, we never get this opportunity. So for me, this is like huge. So welcome everyone. It's great to see you all here. Thank you for switching over to this platform really quickly. Um, just a little bit about me. I was an army nurse. I was an officer in the army nurse corps a um, long time ago. I'm not gonna tell you when. I pursued business ownership because I honestly had trouble getting a job here in, um, in Southwest Oklahoma. And my husband was on the verge of retirement. So that's when I seriously considered looking into entrepreneurship. And then a friend told me about VWISE. Um, that's something that Deanna can talk about later. It's one of their, their entrepreneurship programs. I see some of our, one, at least one VWISE graduate in this course. And then I ended up going to EBV. Yeah, actually it was EBVF for families. And then to Boots to Business. And then I ended up, because of the training that I've gotten through this course and the mentorship, it, that has just been really big through IVMF, I was able to win a lot of seed capital to get my business off the ground. So we are a publishing firm. We publish um, educational software as well as a curriculum for prim primarily K through 12. And so that's where I'm at with, with my business. And I've been teaching for, this is my sixth year teaching with IVMF. I started off with Boots to Business and then e uh, VYs and EBV. So I've, I've had the privilege of working with thousands of um, students through this program and it really is this is my peer group i just love being part of this community and the the benefit for you is you're just joining a bigger extension of the military family so 
I'm excited for you. Kudos for you for even starting this journey. And for, for those of you who are just ready to scale, you should be able to get everything that you need from this course. Um, and I will meet you wherever you're at with all of this and provide resources and direct you to the people that can help you get to that next level. Okay. All right. More VWISE graduates. Super. Let's go ahead. And if you are, I want to show you the online course. But what I really need for you all to do right now is make sure you are not on Blackboard because I won't be able to get in. So <laughs> if you're on Blackboard, please close out that browser. I'm going to go through all of the documents so you know what to expect. And then we're going to walk through the classroom. If you have never been um, part of an online course, I need to hear from you like really soon. Don't wait till the last day of this course. I can't help you at that point. You'll just need to reach out to Deanna and, and see about attending the next course. Um, for everybody else, this is pretty intuitive. It's just a matter of finding the right buttons, okay? All right, let us let me share my screen. Let's go through, let's see. What? Who? Angela, you says you've never been, never been to VWISE or to on, never been part of an online course. If you haven't been part of an online course, I need to hear from you. So just make sure you email me, okay? I don't mind walking students through this. I've done it before. This is actually um, my, my passion and my specialty is workforce development for the disabled, okay? It was part of the reason I started my business. So Let's go on and review some of um, the course documents that you should have already received. And they are also located in the, uh, oh, what do you want to call it? it? It's somewhere on Blackboard. I'm going to show you where it's at. All right. In the course documents tab. <laughs> Super. Thank you. So course documents tab, you can find everything you need in there, okay? It'll be easier once I um, walk you through it. So we have about, we have more than 30 minutes. So the, um, this Blackboard guide right here, this is where you can find all of, um, it, it's basically gonna walk you through the online classroom, all right? So if you can't get a hold of me or Jim or Deanna, it, if you have questions about Blackboard, make sure you go to me. If you have questions about being able to log in, go to Jim, all right? Everything else, like um, the one book that was sent out, or if you need um, help with other things, mostly enrollment, that, that, those questions will be answered by Deanna. So I'm gonna go through this really quick. It's pretty self-explanatory. It'll walk you through the process, um, logging on, setting up your profile, and then accessing the course content, all right? Okay, so these are all hyperlinks. So that's the fastest way to get to wherever you need to go. Let me see if I can pull this up. It's easier if I write on it because people tend to um, drift off when you're when you're just looking at a screen. These are the two. These are the two browsers that tend to work best with Blackboard. Okay, so either Chrome or Firefox. Um, there is no mobile app for this classroom, so it's best if you're either on a tablet or a desktop. Okay. Let's go to the next page. Um, logging in. So this is a key thing right here. And this is the first thing Jim is going to tell you. If you can't log in, make sure that you are using the second button down here. Uh, it's, I don't know if you can see it, but it says other Blackboard user. So you can either use this. And I think, I can't really read it. I think it might be up here too. So once you get to this screen, it's going to bring you to this new screen right here with Blackboard Learn. Make sure you put in the email that you registered with, as well as the password, okay? If it keeps bringing up the screen, which happens to me a lot, don't you, if you've, if you've um, bookmarked it as a tab up here, don't use that. All you really need to do is open up a new tab, type in blackboard.seer.edu, and clear your cookies. Those, that, that function is usually somewhere over here. And then, it should bring you to the screen and inside the classroom, okay? I hope that makes sense. Right, let me go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, the course, you should only have one, but you can usually find it right here. And it should populate right here in the beginning of your screen under the home tab, all right? Okay, uh, this is an older, this is an older uh, set of slides and it has some of the other courses on here, but if you keep, you know, enrolling in the different IVMF courses, then you'll get a chance to um, view those as well. Okay, so even though this was a different course, it's still set up the same. 
what you'll see um, as soon as you go to the home page are the announcements, but everything that you need to access the course content will be on this left hand side. Okay. Everything that you need to for the global blackboard functions will be on the right. What you really want is the stuff here on the left and that's how you can access each of the week's uh, content as well as assignments. All right. Okay. I just want to keep going through this really quick. So remember, with these Blackboard instructions, if you can't get a hold of me right away and you don't know how to do something, go here first or email me and then I can, um, I can send you screenshots. That seems to be the fastest way for most people. I actually have not made it this far with updating my profile, but if you can get to this and this, I think they've reset this software, so it may not look like this then you can give everybody a much more um, detailed uh, profile of where you're at with your venture, okay? That's always helpful when you're trying to connect with people in your industry. And all of our IVMF graduates are, have, are, have been successful in every industry that's out there. So it's a great networking opportunity for you. All right, um, let's go ahead and talk about the weekly content. It's almost easier to just go through the course. So, because this is this is the same thing that I'm gonna show you. Let me go ahead and, and uh, get out of here. So before we actually go into the Blackboard classroom, here's your course schedule. You know, if you're the big picture person, this is the easiest way to look at it is using this table right here and it breaks it down by weeks. Um, the main thing that uh, the main question that most people ask is when are things due and how many people do we reply to in these discussions? So everything is usually due by Friday midnight Eastern Standard Time. And I want to encourage you to try and get them in on time because usually what happens is that people turn stuff in late and I need the weekends to be able to look at, at your, um, your assignments and to be able to give feedback. So if you get it in on time, I can do that. The more detailed you, uh, details you put into your assignments, the more feedback I can give to you, okay? And after having taught this course for several years, I can share a lot of the best practices that successful students have been doing to get to that next level, okay? That, that's one of the biggest advantages I have as an instructor is that people are willing to share that kind of stuff with me. Now, that said, Everything you share with me is confidential unless you put it into one of the discussion forums, okay? Uh, you use your best judgment for that. And when we get to the discussion forums, I'll show you how to either edit or delete your posts if you accidentally share something that is proprietary that um, you realize later you shouldn't have shared, okay? All right, so anyway. Sandra, can I just say one thing with this and I'll be very brief? Yes, um, go ahead. I just wanted to mention, as you'll see, when you look at the course schedule, that some things are due on Wednesday and some things are due on Friday. Now, now the, the Wednesdays, you'll see it's really the videos. Um, the reason that we, now we can't really monitor, have you watched the video or not, right? But one, one thing we're gonna have are our weekly Wednesday webinars um, and they're gonna be with live subject matter experts. And so, I wanna make sure that you're gonna set yourself up for those the best if you watch the videos before the Wednesday evening webinar. So that's why we put it in there as a reminder. So, so if, you, you know, if you have to split it up, um, try to watch your videos first at the beginning of the week and then work on the, the course assignment um, throughout the middle to the end of the week so that you're better prepared for the webinar. Is, is to watch the video, is it required for the Wednesday webinars? No, but we want to make sure that you're, you know, you're splicing it up so that you can handle it better with everything else that's going on in your life um, and that you're more prepared for the subject matter experts so that you know the content that we'll be covering um, and you know what questions to ask. Okay, good. Yes, I'm glad you pointed that out. Um... Yeah, make that your priority because you can get the written assignments done in to me or, or in uh, Blackboard by the end of the week, okay? I will need the weekends to, to go through all of that. These, these webinars, these are the only, I mean, it's basically the only opportunity that you're gonna get to interact with those subject matter, matter experts. So it's good to be prepared. I will also be going through your assignments and the discussion forums and writing down things that I, common themes that I'm seeing you all ask, and I'll pass those along to Deanna so whoever's coming to speak can 
can address your, um, answer your questions, uh, right? Be, or, or so they, they can be more prepared. Okay, so anyway, for the most part, um, this is the stuff that's due by Friday. It's usually the written assignments as well as the, um, the discussions. And uh, if you're struggling with this, just reach out to me and I can give you some guidance, okay? Either even after you post them, I don't mind doing that and you can go in and fix them, all right? This is, this is really for your benefit. This is not for a grade. Everyone's gonna pass as long as you turn in your stuff, okay? And, um, uh, we want, I, we basically just want to help you as much as possible. Okay. Is the sound coming in better? Somebody just said that it's going in and out. This is being recorded. So you should be able to go back through it. And I, I apologize if there are, if the signal is being dropped, that's the internet. Hopefully everybody in my house is off the internet right now. Um, so that this will go through smoothly. All right. So here are the two main assignments by Friday. The written assignment, you will have this every week, and I'm going to go through that before this, this uh, orientation ends, as well as the discussion forums. So for the discussion forums, make sure you are replying to at least two of your classmates' answers, except for the I made it forum. Try and meet as many people as you possibly can with um, whatever time that you uh, are able to do that, okay? And then just plan on Wednesdays. It's gonna be the same time at 6.30. We're doing that on Zoom, right? Deanna, is that just a closed platform or how, or do you wanna tell me later how you wanna um, do that? Yeah, so Zoom every Wednesday, 6.30. Um, it will be at least an hour, 6.30 to 7.30. We're gonna schedule everyone from 6.30 to 7.45, just depending on how many questions. Um, if we end early, we'll end early and you'll get back some of your time. Um, uh, some of the uh, S subject matter experts will come on just purely for a brief introduction and Q&A the entire time. And some will come on and have a little bit of lecture. Any lecture type stuff we'll record first. And then when we go into the Q&A, we'll stop recording. Um, and that's why it's really important to do your best to log in live for that. If you need questions answered, you could submit ahead of the time through X, ask the expert and, and we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that. But it's really important. Um, we wanna make sure um, that these questions are only asked um, within this group of 45. Um, more people feel comfortable asking questions if things are not recorded. Um, so that's one of the reasons we do that as well. Um, and if for some reason you realize that you really cannot make these Wednesday webinars from 6.30 to 7.45, connect with me privately um, and we'll see what we can do to work something out. Um, so that can be something that we can talk offline about because um, we want to make sure that, that, that we can reach everybody and meet the needs of everybody. So um, does that answer, Cassandra? Yes, yes, thank you. I will, um, I will be sending out that link either I'll send it out tomorrow and then I will send another reminder about an hour before the actual uh, meeting, okay? And even and if you can't make it, it's fine. It's part of it will be recorded. And we'll post it within the weekly assignment. I'll take care of doing that. Um, we'll post the link up. Um, there's actually a link um, within your week one assignment that says Wednesday webinar. If you click on that, there'll be a link in there to our, to our webinar as well. Okay, good. All right. Um, if you can't make it, make sure you send your questions ahead of time, okay, either to me or Deanna. All right, so that is the, uh, the course schedule. Let's go ahead and go to, through the syllabus. This, I'm not going to read it. It's self-explanatory. It explains the purpose of this course and then gives you the, the objectives. Um, if you have to work offline, I highly recommend just printing out the syllabus and then typing out your answers on Microsoft Word or whatever um, word processing, processing document you have. And then when you have access to the internet, then you can easily upload them, okay? All right, this is the fastest way to do it. Um, and hopefully you have enough internet to be able to watch the videos, okay? So that, that should be a priority. I'm gonna go, um, I'm going to go over the uh, new venture feasibility analysis tool next, but it gives you all the different resources that you should hold on to. Um, hopefully, if you are new, this is one of the assignments with the, the North American Industry Classification System. Don't get hung up on it. Okay, it's, it's basic. You, you can change. You can change it, but it's just a classification code. And, um, 
I'll go over that later, but that is what you use to help register your business. And then it's, an, it's a code that you're gonna use to be able to apply for contracts as well as to put on your taxes. It's how the government tracks everything. The other thing that I wanna mention is this IVMF resource library. So after you graduate from the course, showing up on the other screen. Let me drag it right over here. This is what it looks like, but there are a lot of really good resources and videos and everything else in here that you'll want to um, keep and be able to access later, especially if you're trying to develop a business plan or, um, you know, other things, okay? So I don't want to spend too much time on that right now, but I just wanted to at least show it to you for those of you who are super visual. It's the easiest way to remember it. Okay, let's go back to... The syllabus, okay, all right. And then it goes over the, the course schedule. So before I get to the feasibility analysis, let's go ahead and go to the classroom. Let me see which screen I have over here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and log back out. Let me see if this will work. All right, so I had mentioned earlier about using the second button. This is what you wanna this is what you want to use. So hopefully it'll let me write in. Is there anyone who's watching right now who has not been able to log in? Okay. <laughs> All right. So once you're here, you can find it right under courses or it'll be over here as well. So let me just click on EBV Spark. Everything that you need, let me get the annotation tools right here. Everything that you need is gonna be on this left-hand side. So all you really need to do is just click on the link as it changes, all right? Um, let's go ahead and go to week one. Okay, so the, the files that you need, they've been put in there for every week. And you can tell once the icon changes from an arrow to a hand, it's downloadable. And then you can um, you can also access the, the discussion forums. Here's the I made it form right there. Okay. Oh, good. Super. Good job. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. I'm gonna we're gonna go back to week one, and then all that's of the awesome. Videos, yeah. So, <laughs> and then all of the videos are right here. Okay. So you should be able to watch those. Um, just watch those at your your earliest convenience. Here's where you're actually going to turn in the assignment. It's, I think it's in the same spot in every week, right? They usually, that's usually how they design it, but it's part of the feasibility analysis. And you're basically going to write up an entire feasibility analysis by the time the, uh, the entire seven weeks is done. Okay, so in order to do this, if you just click on the title, it's gonna bring you up to where you, um, where you upload it, okay? And then just drop the file in. If you are using one of the Mac products and um, if you're using pages, if you can save it as a PDF, you'll get feedback quicker, okay? Because it's very hard for me to get find any device in my house that has pages on it. So if you, just, if you can upload it either as a Microsoft Word file or PDF, then I can go through it really quickly and give you a lot of feedback, all right? Depending on how much information you put in there. Okay, so that's week one. Okay, does anybody have any questions about this so far? For those of you who are, okay, who are repeat students, okay, this, this, should, be, this should be very familiar. And then when you get to the discussion board, that's, that's the last one. That's also part of your homework assignment and that's due by, um, by Friday, midnight Eastern Standard Time. You can turn it in late. You will get credit for it. I just can't guarantee any feedback, especially on the feasibility analysis, because I can guarantee by next week, everybody will start turning things in late. Okay, super. Good job, Robert Battle and Natasha on um, starting the week one orientation. Okay, so you can access the different weeks on the left. Here's the fastest way to get to the discussion forums. I don't even know if you can see this. I'm gonna try and blow it up a little bit. So the discussion forums are also on the left. So that's the easiest way to get to all of them. And um, there's different ways to turn all of this off if you don't wanna see how many unread posts there are, but uh, I leave mine on just because I need to see how many I have to go through. So when you are in this portion with the discussion boards, 
I'm just going to go ahead and click on this. And most of you have already seen this. What you really need to do is create a new thread. So let me go back and draw on this. So once you create the thread, okay, it will bring it up. It will give you the actual assignment up here. Okay. Um, try, I guess it really depends on the thread. If it's asking you, like if it's referring to your industry, I would make sure you put your your industry on here, if you're, especially if you're trying to connect with somebody else in your industry or something that's overlapping. So you can find, you can find each other's messages faster, okay? So once you've typed in your stuff, then you can submit it. And you can also attach files. Um, once you've actually clicked submit, you can still edit or delete your posts, okay? I think I've enabled that. If you save it as a draft, it's not really gonna show up. So make sure that you click submit in order for me to be able to give you credit on these assignments, okay? I hope that makes sense. Um, the question is, you want us to create a PDF of the homework and not type it in. You can type it into the online system if you want to, to keep the feedback, that's the easiest way for you to actually not have to do anything, okay? And a lot of students like that. But if you just want to type it in, and this is this one is more for the discussion forums. Those you have to type in, but for the um, the actual feasibility analysis, then you have to upload an assignment, I believe. Okay. So does that answer your question? Okay. All right. Well, anyway, I hope that makes sense. If you want the feedback, either either upload it as a Microsoft Word or PDF file. Okay. All right, let me go ahead and escape from here. Um, okay, the other the course documents tab is where Deanna mentioned you can find everything that you need. Okay, there's actually other things. I'm not sure if these were all sent. Actually, I think they were the cust oh, like the customer journey templates. So you can find oh. them here, right? Yep. So um, customer journey map. So any of the um, on your course schedule, anything that's a required assignment, that document is also uploaded within that week um, as well. Um, so um, and then some of the we have some additional documents that we'll talk about throughout the course um, in some some of the subject matter experts will be referring to them, such as the business model canvas. Um, and things of that nature. We wanted to make sure we just put a couple of documents in here that could be useful to you um, or, or links to different things as well um, that could be useful to you as you're trying to start a business. Um, and so the business model canvas template is actually a five PowerPoint. It's a PowerPoint with five slides and it really works out um, step by step how to create a uh, a business, like how to create a business model canvas, um, which is really good step before you actually write a business plan. So, um, so just, just a couple of things we wanted to give you as well as some of the other required documentation. You can always go back to course documents. And if we ever have a subject matter expert share something with us after the fact saying, oh yeah, I've got a great link to something or yada, 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 this, this, and this, we'll add it into the course documents tab and you can always go back to grab it. Okay, good. Thank you, Deanna. Okay, so when you can't find something, especially if it was emailed, because you're gonna, it's, it's just gonna, you're just gonna keep getting a lot more emails. And I will be sending reminders every week, okay? Then just go to the course documents link, okay? And there's more resources that you can take your time and look through. The two other things that I want to point out are these two forms, both ask the class as well as ask the experts. I'm going to go ahead and click on them. If you have uh, questions for your classmates or you just wanna connect with each other, this is a forum that you wanna go to, all right? So it's the same as, um, hmm, let me, okay, here you go. So it's the same as before, just create a thread and then ask away, all right? I know in um, past courses like the VWISE course, because that one had, well, that one had a residency. Hopefully this pandemic will end at some point and that can all start up again. Um, that was a way for people to get together before the course started and, uh, and start to connect, okay? Now, the other, the other um, forum, the Ask the Expert forum, that one's for me. So if you have any specific questions about the course, about your business or anything else, just um, 
go to this forum, create a new thread. And this is this I check very frequently and I'll be able to answer your question there, okay? All right, I hope that makes sense. Um, let's go ahead and go back. Right, well, before we go to the feasibility analysis tool, are there any questions at all about Blackboard? Okay, most of you I know have already taken online courses. So this, this should be pretty intuitive. Um, and I, I don't anticipate anyone having any problems with this. So the major homework assignment that you all will have is this feasible, feasibility analysis tool. So this is not a full business plan. This is really just um, a tool that you can use to see if your concept will work. So even if you're already in business and you wanna either test a new product or evaluate a new market, this is one of the things that you can use, all right? So this week, your assignment is to go through part one and then upload this by Friday to me, okay? If you have any extenuating circumstances and that this happens at, in every class and it's just fine, just let me know and I will make accommodations for you, okay? Um, especially if you need to turn things in late. Okay, so part one, this one is really about exploring your motivation for starting your business. There are no right or wrong answers for this. It's whatever works for you, okay? For many of you, you will be starting lifestyle businesses and, and that's great, okay? Not everyone is gonna be the next Google or Facebook or Dropbox, all right? But to be able to be a business owner and to have a little bit more control over your destiny is a great thing. And um, veterans and their families make great entrepreneurs because of what we've gone through in the military. So this, just write out, type it out. You, you actually can fill in this PDF and you don't need to pay for it. All you do, see this little yellow button right here, click on comments, select, um, select the T, which is for text, and then you can just start typing things in, okay? That's it, um, there, okay. So, and then you would just save this and upload it, upload it um, onto Blackboard, or you can type in your answers on Microsoft Word or Pages, but if it's on Pages, send it in as a PDF, okay? And then I can give you some feedback on what you're doing. This, is, this part is really about self-exploration, okay? It's a chance for you to really look at why you are starting your business, because the reasons you start your business will be the way you run your business and there's no right or wrong for this. It's whatever is right for you and your family, okay? And then just go through and uh, fill out the rest. I know for those of you who have done this before, it's good to look, to go back through it and see if these are still your goals or if you wanna change them, okay? I hope that this, is, uh, this makes sense. Yes, this form is on Blackboard, Angela. Let me see if I can find it again. If you go to the, um, course documents right here. It's the very first one under all of the different weeks. You can find the feasibility analysis there. Okay. All right. Okay. We will be going through this every single week. So um, if you want to work ahead, that's fine. Otherwise, just follow the syllabus and we can work through this. Your classmates will be great resources for you as well. So make sure you're connecting with them and asking them these questions in either the Ask the Class forum or in the other different forums, all right? Okay, we've gone through, we've gone through Blackboard, we've gone through the different course documents as well as the homework. Are there any questions at this point? Okay, on Wednesday, we are gonna be looking forward to actually seeing you in person on Zoom. All you really need is a webcam and um, that, should all, that should all be built into your laptops or your phones. You can use Zoom on your phone. There's an app for it, um, all right? And I think a lot of people have, are already using it because of the pandemic and then we'll get more of the face-to-face -face interaction then. Okay, what questions do you have now? I know I went through this really quick, but it looks like most of you already know how to use Blackboard. So I don't wanna spend too much time going through this. Sandra, as people are waiting, or as we're waiting for any questions, um, I can share a couple of, couple of things. Um, just kind of reiterating the importance of 
um, as you go through this course, take some notes for us. If you think, if you see things that, you know, hey, this should have been shared in the orientation webinar, or, um, you know, I didn't know how to do this, or maybe this document we could use, right? Take some notes on that too. If you see some things, um, because sometimes, you know, you'll get to the end of the, you'll experience some really good things in this course, and you might experience some frustrating things in this course, or some things that you didn't like so much. But sometimes you forget about the bad sometimes when things are at the end. Um, and then you take the survey at the end and you're like, everything was great. And although we love those surveys, we love getting that feedback. Um, we really wanna make sure that you don't forget about anything that, that we could have done better. So um, especially with this being the first cohort, because um, we're looking to do many more of these and bring more and more and more um, awareness to what we can do, um, especially with it being a virtual program. So, um, so I, I see we have some uh, questions. So I'll, I'll throw it back over to you, Sandra. Okay. All right. So the question was, and this happens a lot, actually, this has happened in every single class, a lot of you are running both for profit and nonprofit businesses. And the question was, can you do your homework assignments on both? Yes, you can. It's going to be more work for you, but this is this is the best time to do it because you're going to get feedback. And that's the value of this course, not just the networking, but um, whatever constructive criticism you can get from both the, the industry experts as well as your classmates. So if you don't mind doing it, I don't mind giving you feedback on it. All right. I hope that answers your question, Rob. Okay. No, there would be no video uh, collaborate sessions. Um, we we were thinking about what how best to use these. Um, one of the reasons why um, we kept the class at 45 is because um, with as many assignments as that are due um, for one instructor to handle, um, we felt that under 50 would be um, doable. Um, and we wanted to utilize Zoom because um, it is one of the most user-friendly um, uh, avenues out there. They've made it even more user-friendly with all the pandemic um, things that were happening now, um, as well as you can see a grid view, um, which is really cool. So if ideally, if all 45 cohort of all the entire cohort was logged on for the Wednesday webinars, you'd be able to see every single person in the class. So that's why we've chosen to use that. Um, so any of those video collaborate sessions that you might see a link to, we're going to make sure that we delete those this week so that you won't be confused as to what link to use. And then we'll get the Zoom links added. So that'll hopefully um, uh, disparate what's the proper term, get rid of the confusion there. Um, and then ask the expert for Brian. Um, that is um, that is for both. Um, if the question of, you actually have an ask the instructor, I think, don't we? Or is it ask the expert just for you, um, Sandra? It says ask the expert. It would be better to change it to ask the instructor. That's true. Um, if, if you have questions for um, for a specific sub, uh, specific industry expert, you can submit them through that and just say these are questions for, um, you know, for and just submit them that way. Um, or you can email them to 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 us. But the best way might be to submit that. We can we can. That's a great idea. I just made a note. Um, we can actually add an ask the instructor versus ask the expert so that it makes it easier. So if you have questions just for Sandra, although she'll be able to see those questions that you submitted to ask the expert, um, that way um, when we have those industry specific experts, um, we can get those to them. Um, but that's also something that I'd like, just wanted to mention too, um, Brian, thanks for asking that question, um, reminding me of something I wanted to share. Um, but we might not have um, uh, subject matter experts from every industry. Um, or maybe even your specific industry that you wanna start, but we can get you in contact with someone or get the answers that you need. So even if um, you look ahead, um, as we start to fill in who the experts, experts are going to be for each week, um, and you see that you know there's someone not there and you really need an answer to a question, we've got the networks and can get you connected with someone who can answer that question for you. So um, no question is, um, is too, I guess, too big um, because if if Sandra can't answer it, if I can't answer it, if our subject matter can't answer answer it, answer it we have um, a good network that can get you those answers. Okay, there's two questions. I'm going to answer Caesar's first before I go back to the feasibility analysis tool. 
Okay, this has happened in every single class where somebody can't decide what business to start. As you work through the feasibility analysis tool, it will give you real time data, which will help you to decide whether or not it's feas feasible or if you really wanna do it. Uh, when I used to teach for Boots to Business back when it was the eight week online course, we had students who would go through the entire eight weeks, plan out a business, and at the very end, tell me, this, this is going to be too much work for me for right now, but I'm glad I went through the process because I learned that this is not going to be the right business for me. They wanted to start um, a restaurant or a, a garage or something, but it allowed them to safely work out that process with, and fail on paper versus failing in real life and spending a lot of money, you know, losing a lot of money. So as you go through the homework and post your discussions, you, your classmates and I, and then you just figuring it out on your own will answer that question, okay? All right, okay, so I'm gonna share my screen again. Let's go back to the PDF. So this is how you write for free on a PDF. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out. Um, so this is what it looks like. You see all the little icons. What you're gonna do first is expand the right toolbar. Let me get the annotation tool so you can see exactly how I'm, um, what I'm gonna select. You should see this yellow comment bubble. Okay, this, this program right here is free, Adobe PDF or Acrobat Reader. You wanna select on this. So let me go ahead and get my mouse and select on it. Did you notice how it brought up, brought, brought up this um, second toolbar? This is what you want. So once you're here, you see the T? Click on that, your mouse becomes the typing tool. And then you can just click anywhere on the document and start typing away, okay? This is how you fill it out for free. Okay, anyway, just put whatever text you want on here. Angela okay. is saying that she doesn't seem to see or have those icons. Do you know um, if there's some way that we could or a, a site that we could direct her to, to see if. Yeah, let me find, okay. I have the professional version, so I'm wondering if that might be it, but once you download Adobe Acrobat, even the free version, here it is, download reader. Let me see if this will work. Okay, and it should have downloaded somewhere on here. This may or may not work because I already have it installed on my computer. Um, so I would say the best bet would be for Angela is she should go to um, Google the Adobe and download the reader, try it that way. Um, and, if, and if you still can't, can't do that, um, uh, then shoot an email to Sandra or myself or both of us, and we can try to figure out um, what, what, what I could do is create, create it as a Word document for you um, and send it that way, or just submit another copy as a Word document. Um, it gets a little, sometimes the fonts get a little off that way, um, but we could definitely um, work around that. So just let us know, Angela, just follow up with us. Yeah, if you do this as a Word document, it's actually easier because then you can turn it into a, a business plan later. I mean, this is a great thing to be able to write in, but as you move along and you need something to show to an advisor and then they start giving you more detailed reports that you can really use, um, this probably won't be enough, okay? So, okay, so I didn't know that, Caesar, that the free version doesn't allow you to edit. I, that's usually what I use with my kids on their cheaper computers downstairs. So I will create a Word document and add that um, tomorrow morning. So that'll be put in course documents tomorrow morning, probably by 10 a.m. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah. So, um, so I, I just have to fiddle. I would just export it and add it right now, but I got to fiddle around with a little bit of the, of the fonts and things like that. Cause sometimes things get shifted and I want to make sure everything looks good. So we'll get that all added. Sorry about that. This is perfect. See? So now I know that we should just have both versions available. Beautiful. Yeah. 
This is, I mean, if you print this out and write all over it, it will actually be really effective because it'll get the, the juices flowing and it'll help you to actually write something out so that this course will be meaningful for you by the time it ends, okay? The other thing I wanna mention is um, the, uh, this, what is it? Is it the cer certificate? If you can at least finish what, 75% of the assignments. So there's 14 of them. So it becomes like 10 and a half. If you get to at least, I wanna say week six, you will be done with the graduation requirements of the course and earn a course certificate, all right? Okay, Adobe Pro allows PDF to Word. Yes, it messes it up though, because I try that all the time, but yes, you're right, Bob. <laughs> okay, um, somebody wrote they have Mac products and they'll convert to Word. Either one is fine. If you have whatever is easiest, um, Whatever it doesn't mess up because I've seen pages convert things and then you've gone to all this trouble formatting it and making it look nice and then it messes it all up. So if it's easier to use PDF, that's fine too. Um, I'm, I've been a longtime educator and I'm an editor, so I can edit anything, most things. Okay, super, great questions so far. Are there any other questions about the course in general, the homework assignments, and while we have Deanna on here, any questions for her before we end? Okay, so somebody else has the free version of Adobe and they can add comments. Okay, so if it works, just expand this toolbar, go to comments, you'll, it'll bring down this drop down menu and then you can add text. Just keep playing with it. If you're trying to do it online, here I'm trying to find, wherever this was. Sometimes there's, there's an online version, it doesn't work. You actually need to download the program to your computer and then open it up and run the software and then it will allow you to do the editing and save it. Okay, I hope that makes more sense. Okay, good. Brian, um, to answer Brian's questions, are we, are we going to work in small groups weekly? No, so there's nothing set up um, to put you in small groups to work. Um, great idea. Um, please make note of that to add to a survey. Something to think about. If you want to connect um, on the discussion boards with some of your fellow classmates to create those things, um, that would be great to do. Um, uh, I, I That is something that maybe because we are, I can't make any promises, but because we are um, so early on in the course, maybe it's something we could incorporate a little later on. Um, there will be some things that we do at the end. Um, if you look down, I think it's uh, value delivery. There's an activity called the beer game. Um, and that's an activity that you can play by yourself or with another with a group. So maybe we can work something out there. Um, please keep notes of these. I'm actually, I'll take that idea um, Brian to our uh, director who you'll meet on Wednesday. Um, it may be something that we can at least create a couple of sessions out of, but it's, I can't make any promises right now. Uh, but what a great idea. Thank you for that. Oh, she already took us to the beer game. <laughs> um, it's pretty easy and we'll go over it. Uh, so um, one thing that, that will, it's pretty self-explanatory. I did it. I failed horribly. Um, I would, I, but I, I rushed through it just to go through it. So um, it's something we're going to do later on. It really talks about the supply chain and, and helps you, how can you sustain um, 20, I think it's 21 or 24 weeks. Um, but, uh, but our, um, our subject matter expert that week will discuss a little bit about it. Um, whether you do it before that time or after, um, it's a pretty interesting, pretty interesting activity. So um, I did want to mention um, also just kind of hype up a little bit for this Wednesday. Um, <laughs> Brian, that's right. Out of the 45 of us, we can figure it out. <laughs> Great. Um, I wish I could see you all in person. I'm, I'm going to be really excited for our Zoom call on Wednesday, hoping that you don't have to have video, but video is just a really fun tool, especially when something is completely virtual. Normally with our, our 
EBV residency program, we do that phase one online, um, which is, you know, like this for a couple of weeks. And then we um, all see each other um, uh, in person, face to face. And that's something we don't get to do with this class. Um, so that is one of the drawbacks um, is not being able to meet each other, but being able to virtually connect via Zoom is awesome. Um, so uh, I'm really excited for Wednesday, um, but just to kind of build a little bit up, um, Dr. Haney will be joining us for Wednesday. Now, Dr. Haney is the person um, who actually started the EBV program. He is our executive director of IVMF. I'll do more of an intro later. The intro is actually included in week one under webinar Wednesday, a, pic a picture of him um, and a link to his bio. Feel free to take a look at that. There will not be a test. Um, on his bio, but he started EBV. EBV is his baby. Um, and all other programs and, and offerings that IVMF has, has spurred from that one program that was started in 2007. He was an entrepreneurship professor at Syracuse University. He was an Air Force veteran. He saw uh, veterans coming out of war and said, they need something. They need, they will make great entrepreneurs. They need this and created, got some funding from the university. Um, and uh, from Syracuse University and with the help of the Whitman School of Management started this program. Um, uh, EBV is near and dear to his heart, um, whether it's EBV Spark, EBV or EBV Accelerate, um, he loves the programs. And so um, he will be speaking with us. It's a really neat opportunity um, just with you all. Um, so come prepared if you can watch his videos um, it's a sec because of the length. Um, this is one of the longer videos. Um, normally, we are trying to keep the videos between 30 and 30 and 60 minutes a piece. This one is about an hour and 15 minutes, um, but it is good content. It's all about opportunity recognition. I'm sure he'll be referring to it um, uh, when he speaks. Um, but come prepared for questions because not many people get an hour of question and answers with Dr. Haney. So um, he's very knowledgeable. He can answer pretty much any question uh, that you have for him. So I'm uh, really excited for that time. Okay, we, um, well, we are done unless anyone awesome. has any more questions or unless Deanna has anything else. No, I think, I think that's it. Um, we may have forgotten to share something. Um, you may have more questions. Some of you who are listening to the recording of this later on, um, if you have questions, um, you can ask them to any of us. If it's about coursework, please contact Sandra. Um, and if it's about, um, you know, any ins and outs or you're having issues with um, you didn't receive your welcome packet or things like that, I can check the tracking on those to see um, where it's at or what's happened to it or resend some items if I have to. Uh, Brian said he missed the first portion. Uh, what is the differentiation between your roles with Sandra? Thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll explain that. So I have, I am uh, the uh, Institute for Veterans and Military Families representative. So I'm kind of the program manager um, of a lot of our EBV programs that we run. So I can answer questions about the, spe the upcoming speakers. Um, if you need have a question for something in a specific industry, I can answer those or get you in contact with someone who can. If you have questions about coursework, so your assignments, um, what videos you need to watch, um, something on the course schedule, um, uh, ask, ask Sandra. Um, I, it can't hurt. Um, sometimes, you know, if you don't know what to do, just email Sandra and she can forward the information to us if we need. Um, and if you are having issues with Blackboard, so you can't log in, um, you can't view anything, you forgot your password, um, email um, Jim um, at IVMF help. Um, I'll put that in here. It's in your course syllabus. It's also in one of Sandra's emails and in a couple of my emails, um, how that differentiates. So Sandra in, in her email that she shared, I think today and one yesterday kind of showed the three of us um, for, you know, the overall course questions, me for course content, Sandra, and for specific IT help um, would be uh, Jim Powers, who you will never meet, but he is very quick to respond if you submit a help ticket. 
So there was a comment from, or a question from Josh. When you go to EBV next year, you will feel like you are part of a mini MBA program. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it is. Um, it, we actually kind of call it a crash MBA course. Um, and it really is. Um, and this will do, this course will do nothing but set you up to success in that. Um, but we knew that we couldn't wait till 2021, especially with what's going on in the world today. We knew that uh, we know that some of you maybe after coming out of this will have to pivot already so early on because of what's been happening in our country. Um, but we wanted to make sure because we don't know what the future holds when it comes to residency programs. We want to be back in 2021 and we are going to do our best to be able to do that safely. Um, in the meantime, we wanted to make sure that we are, were creating a program that could help meet your needs. If you come out of this course and you test your business and you realize this is not the right business for me, I need to move to something else. Or you come out, as Sandra said, and realize, you know what, now I know what it's what's entailed to get this business started and I need to wait a little bit. That's success. That's what this program is set to do. And hopefully you come out of this program and you say, you know what, I've tested my business. It's a good idea. I have the resource and tools. I can start working on it now. And I don't have to wait for that residency program to begin. Um, but once you start your business, don't wait until 2021 to start your business. If you can start your business after this course, do it. You can still attend EBV because the networks that you will establish in that residency program um, are going to take you far. The funding is the most important. Is the most important. That is week seven. I would say, um, and I think that you will see. Um, it's a good point, Angela. Funding is very important. Um, you're feel free to to look ahead into those videos if you want. Um, but one thing, um, if you start working through that book that we sent you, now that book is just an additional resources. There's nothing required in it. Um, but a lot of our um, course is designed around the subjects of that book. And really, we talk about, you know, opportunity recognition and value creation. So if someone is very, is at the very, very beginning stages, it really helps you by working through week one to seven, um, how to properly work through your business. So yes, funding is one of the most important things, but we got to start with testing, is your idea feasible? before we actually see if you should fund it. Um, but I get what you're saying, Angela, so I appreciate that. You're more than welcome to look ahead um, and, and check on those videos. All right, Mika, I see you. Um, if you could just shoot me an email, I'd appreciate it. Um, uh, I will put it, put it in, in here. Um, I'll just put my personal email. Um, just shoot me an email. I will check the tracking number um, and see what's happened. Um, sometimes I may have inputted the address incorrectly, or maybe um, we sent most of our uh, packages via FedEx, so I can easily track that. Um, and if for some reason something happened to it, we can overnight something to you. Um, so, Sandra, back to you. <laughs> okay. Um, I know some, I know there are quite a few of you with established businesses. So, if you are wanting to work ahead, you already have your financials done and you want to shoot them over to me, this is the best time now because weeks three to four to five is they're going to get very busy. So um, just send, just start sending me stuff that you want me to look at because it'll give us more time to help you work through your concept wherever you are at, at this you know stage of the game. All right. I hope that makes some sense. All right, everyone, we are going to end this. I want to start going through your discussions. When you are introducing yourselves on the I Made It forum, if you can list which um, school you were accepted at, it will just uh, yeah. help you to form these, these little Facebook groups and whatever, you know, that the students always make at the end of this. Yep. And we have you're a like lot of people from Texas A&M and a lot of people from UCLA that were that, that were on those lists for either application reviews, interviews, or had already been accepted. Oh, so, wow. Uh, we had some good, good groups from there. Um, we got a couple from UConn. 
um, and a good number from Syracuse University as well. Um, some of them weren't even at the point to even have an interview yet, but were put into that bucket, so to speak. And we had made a decision so early on um, to have to postpone. So, um, so we're really excited. Um, so we really have four main schools and we do have one person from SJU. Um, I believe it's, um, uh, I can't think of her name right now. It'll come to me later. <laughs> Okay, super. Angela, um, I'm referring to the, I made it, I made it for him. So go there and uh, just, just let everybody know where you're at. Okay, I'm a little biased here, Syracuse, all right, all the <laughs> way. But it doesn't matter where you go. Everyone has that same unique experience. Um, I'm excited for you guys when you actually go there next summer. But this is it for now. I, I have to end this. So some of yep. you can go and eat dinner and I will see you online on Blackboard this evening and throughout the week. And we'll see you online again on Zoom starting on Wednesday. All right. Have a great night. We're so excited to work with you and we will see y'all soon. All right. Thank Bye you. Bye for now. Bye-bye.